House Agriculture Committee. Republican Congressman Robert Goodlot from Virginia is the vice chairman of that committee. He joins us this morning from Washington. Congressman, good morning to you. Good morning. A lot of people wonder what good or what information can come out of this hearing. Do you expect him to talk at all? Well, we don't know yet. Obviously, we have lots of questions, and I think it'll be a good indication of the nature of the depth of the problem uh, about whether or not he answers them. If he uh, answers the questions, then uh, it'll be obvious that he and uh, his advisors think this is primarily related to uh, maybe some bad business decisions as opposed to criminal acts. Uh, if he does choose to plead the fifth, uh, to uh, refuse to answer questions on the grounds that they may tend to his answers may tend to incriminate him, then obviously that's going to intensify the investigation of this by various uh, government agencies uh, and potentially lead to uh, prosecution of uh, various people participating in this. Yeah, Let, let's pretend for a moment that he does not plead uh, the fifth. Uh, hard to imagine his lawyers letting him do that, but if if he does decide to talk, what do you want to know first? What do you want to know the most? Well, first of all, I want to know uh, just exactly what went into the decision-making process for him uh, first joining this company, and then secondly, uh, why the decision was made to place such a heavy emphasis on uh, foreign sovereign debt, knowing uh, what's going on in many countries in Europe. Uh, that uh, is obviously what led to uh, their uh, quarterly loss uh, in the hundreds of millions of dollars, and then their uh, downgrade by Moody's, and then their filing for bankruptcy. Uh, uh, about uh, a month or so ago, and uh, that uh, has then led to the questions that have arisen about what happened to money that was supposed to be held in escrow by MF Global uh, on behalf of their customers uh, that has apparently disappeared maybe a billion dollars or more. So obviously questions will then go to where is that money and how do we get it back to the bankruptcy trustee to protect uh, uh, our constituents. And does the committee have plans to subpoena board members, subpoena former risk managers, anyone other, anyone who might have been in a position to understand and manipulate these positions uh, at MF? Well, the committee intends to pursue this matter very aggressively, uh, not only because we're concerned about what happened in this case, but because we know that uh, there are many people who are dependent upon the futures trading market for the operation of their businesses, farmers and ranchers, people who uh, uh, manufacturers dependent upon energy supplies who want to use that market to smooth out uh, the volatility that can occur in some of these markets. And if you don't have confidence in the system, uh, then the system doesn't work for major sectors of the U.S. economy. So this doesn't just relate to what's happening with MF Global. It relates to uh, what is happening with the CFTC and their oversight uh, of this sector of the industry. And, you know, they met on Monday. They made some rule changes then. Are those rules sufficient? Uh, are they going to help uh, avoid this type of problem in the future? Will they help to bring some certainty to the marketplace, some assurance to people uh, who've been using this marketplace that when they put money with a company like MF Global, their funds will will be held secure and only utilized as per their instructions right. and not invested in things like foreign sovereign debt that obviously but, was but, way too risky. But even those rule changes, Congressman, were proposed a long time ago and were, re and were resisted in part by the, by the likes of MF and, and Corzine. And uh, it just seems like the, the blame goes far beyond the executive suite here. Well, absolutely right. Uh, there's no question that uh, this, the, the rulemaking process has been a part of uh, the evolution of a whole bunch of rules that have been uh, uh, delayed and in some instances not yet implemented coming out of a legislation that passed the Congress previously, some of which it's because the rules are in and of themselves controversial. Uh, many have argued they're counterproductive. Obviously, Corzine and others did that with regard to Rule 1.25. We want to find out uh, what motivated that and whether the changes made on Monday are sufficient. Well, you're going to get a lot of attention at this hearing. Uh, we'll be watching it closely, of course. Congressman, thanks for uh, the preview. Uh, thank you, and we will be pursuing it. You will, you will see further hearings.